Welcome to the Costa Rica Travel and Living Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Baker. This week's a good one. This week, I am interviewing my good friend and business owner, Richard Bexon. Richard is a UK expat that has been living and working here in Costa Rica for nearly 20 years. He's based in San Joaquin de Flores in the Central Valley, uh, where he lives with his Tika wife and his two young kids. Uh, Richard had played a big part in my very own career uh, starting in travel nearly 18 years ago when I began uh, with Costa Rican Vacations. Uh, Richard obviously was a co-owner at Costa Rican Vacations. He started many businesses in his himself and he is now uh, currently managing his own business which is the Costa Rica real estate and investment business. Richard also has a podcast which you can check out in the description box below about real estate and investing here in Costa Rica. It's got hundreds of thousands of downloads and is incredibly informative. And if you're thinking about traveling or investing or even living in the future in this part of the world, certainly give it a listen and reach out to Richard. As ever, if you have any questions for us, please don't forget to let us know in the descriptions box below. And of course, please like and subscribe to wherever you get your podcast uh, so you never miss a weekly episode. And we really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's jump in to our conversation with Richard. Good afternoon, Richard. How's it going? Yeah, it's good, man. It's uh, a pleasure to be on the uh, in the in the virtual world with you. I know we were together this week, so it's nice to be in the uh, yeah the virtual world. Well, nice nice to have you on. This is I got to be honest, uh, our very first guest who has his very own podcast. You've invited me on, and it's nice to have you on the other side. Well, I think you are a big part of the success of my podcast, if I can call it a success, Adam. So it's uh, it's my pleasure to come on your podcast. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, I've got a lot to get through today. I'm excited. And I know for a lot of our listeners, when talking about uh, real estate investing, top tips in coming to live down here and actually making it profitable as well is a fascinating topic and one that you've obviously explored. I'm certainly going to add a description in the uh, in the link box below for those watching on YouTube. Um, so hopefully people can reach out to you later on. But as ever, Richard, I'd love to jump straight in with the first question, which is how did it all begin for you in Costa Rica? What's your story? Well, it didn't start in Costa Rica. It actually started in northern Minnesota, like two hours north of Duluth. I mean, really on the border with Canada. I was up there working for a hotel company and uh, I that was like 23, 24 years ago. God, it just keeps piling on the years. And I met a Costa Rican lady. And anyway, fast forward, you know, she's been my wife for uh, 18 years, I think. Um, she, won't, she won't get mad at me for that because she doesn't even know how many years we've been married either. So she gets our anniversary. So do I. And uh, usually a week later, we remember. But And we have two kids. And... Um, you know, we were young, we fell in love. I came down here when I was like 20 years old and uh, thought, wow, what an amazing country with amazing people. And I think that as everybody that's been to Costa Rica, you know, just understands as soon as you get here, it's just, you know, I mean, it's paradise from every aspect, from the food, the people, et cetera. And so, yeah, so I went back to the States, quit my job, moved down here for six months, finished my thesis for university, um, was kind of uh, starting a business. Uh, we went to England in 2004. She lasted to about February and she was like, how do you people live like this? The food <laughs> is terrible. The people aren't that friendly and this weather is horrible. I'm going back to Costa Rica. Are you coming? And I was coming. like, okay. So I uh, sold my shares in my business to my business partner there and uh, moved here. I moved here the 8th of March, got married, I think the 13th of March. Um, and actually interviewed with Costa Rican Vacations the uh, the 15th of March and started work the 1st of April. Incredible. How, how old were you at that point when you made that decision? I just turned 23. I turned 23 the 5th of March and the 8th I was married. The 13th was the, no, the 8th I was married. The 13th was the interview, not the 15th. Yeah. So it, it went pretty quickly. Goodness me. One thing I love about this podcast, trying to many expat friends, colleagues around the country, I, I'm on repeat, but so many stories are different. So many different times when people got to Costa Rica, you very much like me in your early 20s. And, but, and, yep. and, and for sure, most of the guests don't usually make that whole process inside a week. You know, I, obviously, you've, you've been in Costa Rica for a little bit of time. Uh, your, your now wife was there with you in the UK. But going from landing to getting married to getting the job that then took you a lot further. Uh, fantastic. How, how, how much did you enjoy that stay when you first came to Costa Rica for six months? I mean, look, I loved it, man. You know, I was living with my wife and her family and it was just great. I mean, it was, I got to learn, I didn't speak a word of Spanish when I first came here and anybody that knows me, my Spanish is so street Spanish. 
Yeah. Uh, I actually did a podcast yesterday where it was about business entrepreneurship in Spanish that a friend of mine uh, had. And he was like, Rich, will you come on? And I'm like, you really want me to do this with my Pachuco street Spanish? Um, but I, I look, I, when I first got everything was was different, man. I mean, it's like bars on windows of homes we never saw before of just like there's no heating in houses. Yeah. And like it's just very, very it's a simpler life. Like it, it, it took a while to slow down and really understand I, I look, I'll give you an example. Like when I first got here, like one of the first weeks I was here, my wife was like, okay, we're going out with some friends eight o'clock on Friday night, you know, and in the UK, you say eight o'clock and at 7.30, 7.40, you're ready and you're there. So 7.30, sure. 7.40, I was there and I just looked at my wife and she hadn't even taken a shower. She's not even ready. I'm like, what, like what, what's going on? And she just kind of ignored me as she does. Um, even back then, even before we were married, she was ignoring me, but, uh, and then like eight o'clock rolled around and I'm like, you aren't even ready. And she was like, oh yeah. I'm like when people say eight here, they don't really mean eight. Like they'll probably rock up maybe between nine 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm like, uh, I'm not going. And she's like, what? I'm like, it don't work like that where I come from. Like, I know I'm in a foreign country, but I hadn't adjusted yet. And I'm like, unless like, if you say eight, we go out at eight. And now all my neighbors and everyone that knows me is like, when I say eight, I mean eight, like the things get started at eight. So you've actually managed to, to immerse your bit of your culture into those around you. That's well, quite rare. It doesn't always work. Well, yeah, I mean, I say that, but like, it's, it's you know, I'm fighting a, a current here. I'm swimming up and up with current. So yeah. sometimes I just have to adjust to it on, on, well, I'd say this, when it's at my house and it's at eight o'clock, everyone knows at eight o'clock to yeah. be there. When it's someone else's house and they say eight, People yeah. traipse in from eight to yeah. ten. You know, you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's that famous word in Spanish, "aurita," in a little yeah. bit, or maybe later. I hate or, it. Or maybe right now. My kids say it to me. My kids say it to me. Your boy in "aurita," and I'm like, God, man, it just. I hate those words. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very true. One of my questions here is always, uh, were there any initial challenges? And you kind of explain this when you when you, did you expect uh, the kind of lifestyle? So you've been here for six months before you moved back to the UK, finished up, and then came over. Was there anything that surprised you when you actually settled? I mean, six months is a good long period to get used to the people, the culture, where you're going to live, sure. obviously with your partner, her family, anything those that were still slightly out of the blue or not really? Just the bureaucracy and red tape of getting like opening bank accounts, getting credit cards, like doing any type of business here is just so difficult. Like I'm even now I'm trying to open a bank account for an investment fund I'm, I, I've, I'm, I'm doing. And I've been with this bank for, you know, since I've been here. Yeah. And it's still a nightmare, man. And like, I can't get hold of anyone and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So I'm going to have to go back into the bank tomorrow. And, you know, they're like, well, I can get you a, I can get you a, um, like, a, a Sita, like, a, a, yeah. an appointment. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Even if the appointment's at 11, they're not getting to me till 11, 45, 12. So, you know, it's just I, that stuff. And as I get older, I get less, you know, I have less patience as well. So it's, it's, yeah. You know, I, I tell my clients sometimes, I'm like, look, just go with the flow. Don't swim up the current. Otherwise it are just yeah. going to, you know, take you away. And here's me, you know, getting frustrated with the banks here. So, uh, but just bureaucracy of anything to do with government, um, you know, you just need to kind of just be like, okay, I'm going to have to do it two or three times. Like, just know you're going to have to do it two or three times, yeah. but there's some stuff. I just got a Costa Rican passport. Like getting my citizenship was the easiest thing I've ever done. Like I gave him my paperwork and they said, come back next. Like they, they said, okay, approved. So I went there and they said, come back on Wednesday at one o'clock and pick it up. And I went on Wednesday and picked it up. And then I went to, I was like, I'll get my passport. So I booked at the yeah. uh, post office. Walked in, showed them that, showed them that I paid. And they said, okay, in four weeks, it'll be ready. A week later, I get a text message. It's ready. I walk in, show it, they give me my passport. I'm like, wait, this can't be this easy. Like, like, I, yeah. I, have a, I had a whole question to ask you about that. And obviously, congratulations on your citizenship, you. which, is, which is pretty rare as well. Many expats that live here have their legal residency working, whatnot, but not everybody gets the citizenship. That's fantastic that the process was so smooth. Yeah. You know, I, I decided to do it. You know, I've been here for a long time. The kids have been born here, but you know, I'm a little involved in politics here. As you guys know, I sued the president a while back, yeah. which was yeah. fun. And the health minister, you were, you, were, uh, you were in the front row of that one. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, you know, I just was like, look, I, I mean, I have never voted in my life, Adam, if you can believe like just the timings of never living in the UK. Like, yeah. You know, when elections came around, I was just never there. And like, and people were like, well, why didn't you do a postal vote? And I was like, I don't, live in the uk like i should don't really care yeah. you know not that i don't care but i shouldn't have a voice in a country i don't live in and here yeah. residency doesn't give me the vote so i was like you know what it's probably you know i'm 41 years old it's probably about time that you know if i'm going to make a political donation i do it in a legal fashion and uh, if i'm going to vote you know that i do vote so well, i think I'll be, my 
My first vote will be the mayor, 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 mayoral elections uh, coming up in February. So this should yeah. be interesting. No, that's wonderful. And uh, you'll probably have a say in it as well. But it's always good to have dual nationality. Your kids have dual nationality. Yep. You have more flexibility in your decisions in the long run. And of course, like us who have residency, we don't have to renew it every three, four, five years, which is always a pain. You talk about bureaucracy and process. Yeah, but that's not that bad anymore, man. When I did it last time, easier. you know, it's so easy. I mean, you go into Correos de Costa Rica now, the post office, and yeah. you can do it and you sit down and take it and pay and then that's it. And then it comes like it got a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you make it a really interesting point. I remember when I first moved here, and I couldn't believe the process with the banks and some of the red tapes. It's funny that you mentioned that you struggle more now as you get older. For me in my early 20s, I just for 10 years, I was like, oh, this is insane. This is madness. I've done my best to mellow out as I approach two decades. And I don't know, I've got to, I, like you, like you say, if you know it's going to happen, you can try and mentally prepare for those situations, whether it's customer service, waiting in line for an hour, whatever it may be. But it does help to at least have a bit of that information ahead of time, so you can, can try and you can try and prepare for yeah, it. Yeah, you know me, Adam, and we've known each other for a long time. I like to move really fast and break yeah. stuff. Um, you know, I'm not a... Costa Rica is not the ideal <clears throat> country for you for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, but it's a country that operates in the gray, which is great. So I just move in the gray and just break stuff, you know, and yeah. like, if you're okay with that, then, you know, that's great. And I've made tons of mistakes, dude. I've lost millions of dollars, you know, on mistakes that I've, that I've made. And I'm just like, well, okay, well, I learned. Well, and learned. that's why I do what I do now, where I'm like, I help people don't make the mistakes that I've seen and mistakes that I've done yeah. so that like, it doesn't cost them, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. During any of those lessons, whether you were working in tourism during the recession, the crisis in 08, was there ever a moment that you think, you know, I'm going to go back to the UK. I'm going to see if I can encourage my family. No, always. Stay. I mean, I got job offers with ridiculous money in London from friends that had businesses and stuff. It's just my quality of life here is amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, I fly to work. Yeah. Like I fly, like literally, like I'm like, you know, because I work all over the country. There's not a place in this country we probably don't work in. Yeah. And like Monday morning, I got on a flight at 9 a.m. in the morning and 15 minutes later, I was in Manuel Antonio. You know, the, our driver picks us up. We have a driver and uh, cars all over the country and picks me up and drives me where I need to get to. And like I meet and then I go back and then I fly and like, and it's beautiful flying here. Like this country yeah. is it's amazing. spectacular. Yeah. No, and these, you know, these little tiny Indiana Jones planes, it's an adventure in itself. You get to see it from a low altitude so you can actually see the geography. Uh, I yeah. wanted to ask you, 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 for those that know you, obviously incredibly entrepreneurial. I, since I've known you, not just working in tourism, owning uh, the huge section of Costa Rican vacations business, starting multitude of businesses, selling them on. What are some of the challenges that you found with that entre entrepreneurial spirit in Costa Rica to start, grow and have a successful business? Well, number one is just getting started, like, again, opening a bank account and just knowing tax. Like tax here is very complicated, as it is in most countries. But like there are places you can go to, like, you know, in the UK, Citizens Advice, and I'm sure in the US that there are places you can go on to. Costa Rica is just such a dark place, not a dark place when it comes to that. Like, it's just not readily available. And there are very few people that know it. So, you know, and it's expensive sometimes to get that advice. So starting a business can be a little, you know, difficult. Like here, like this, um, there are stepped taxes in Costa Rica where you pay, like, I can't remember what it is, 15, 25, 30%. But once you reach, I think it's like, close to $400,000 of revenue, or it might be $200,000 of revenue. As you guys can see, I don't really know this. They kept my account <laughs> yeah. deal. So that entails, Rich, stop billing. Yeah. You know, um, it's a good problem to have. But like, then everything becomes 30%. It's retroactive for taxes at 30%. So it's like, open another business. So I have to open multiple businesses up so I don't hit that 30%, right. you know, and I'm only paying 15 or 25 in certain things, which makes no sense. Yeah. Like, you know, but it's just, Again, the left hand here doesn't know what the right hand is doing sometimes. So you just need to be able to navigate that. I mean, and, and in the US and in the UK, it's very similar as well. There are tricks to do it, but it's just that just knowledge is not readily available. Like you can't just go and speak to any accountant and they'll know that. There are tax advisors here, but they're very expensive. You know, my tax advisor, you know, is the ex head of like the IRS here. So, you know, knows his way around it and what to do and what not to do. But, you know, he's charging close to $500 an hour. Presumably, you know, is, this is a dual, dual language as well. You, you get to speak in English. A lot of people might be interested in investing coming down yeah. don't speak Spanish. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter for me. I just say to people, what are you more comfortable talking in? Because for me, it's kind of, you know, somewhat the same. And if I don't understand something, then I'll let them know. But, yeah. 
I, I think getting started, but like, it's a great country to start business in just because there really aren't that many rules. I mean, there are rules, but like, it's a country of gray, dude, which is the beauty of it. But it's yeah. the land of opportunity. As I say, I plata en el calle. There's money in the street. Like yeah. on my podcast, I always ask people like, what's the business that's missing in Costa Rica? And there are tons of them, just a dry cleaners, like an automatic car wash, just all of those things, like yeah. organic organic supermarkets like we don't have a whole food style shop yeah. here like that could be huge like so there's just a there's there's so much stuff that could be applied from whatever your home country is to here because yeah. there are a lot of expats living here i've said the same thing as a, as a brit and i've interviewed a number of brits now even just having a location where you can get a british breakfast british lunch snacks everybody does every other and i'm like give me give me an english roast dinner for lunch Give me a bloody pie. Uh, it's a very what, what you're not about. You came to my house the other day for that, Adam. That's, that's what you got exactly, me for. But we, we keep it very small. We keep it this tiny yeah. British expat community. Um, no, it, may, it makes. I don't. Sense. I don't know. I don't know whether I agree with you on that though, Adam. Like, even if there was a place for roast dinner here, I don't think I'd get it. Like, because I, you, but maybe as a Brit, you have a very high expectation of how good it would be. No, but I'm acclimatized here now to Costa Rica. Like, I, you know, I, you know, I, I wanted. You know, I had cassau for dinner last night, which is rice and beans and fish and salad. Like, I love a cassau. Like, if you were like, it's and the weather here doesn't really make you want to eat heavy food. Like, when it's cold, you you're burning energy, so you yeah. need that starch and that meat and like all that stuff. It's here in point. Costa Rica, it's it's light, it's light, so we don't yeah. really need that as much. Yeah, yeah, hot and humid all year round. That's very true. Do you feel that yeah. your attitude really helps that though? Because you're a very outgoing person. You're always looking for the next opportunity. Do you reckon that there's there's people that will come down because it is a land of opportunity if you have that mentality? So that's part of it. But Costa Rica yeah. also helps. But I think anyone can have this mentality, Adam. I mean, it's it's like, you know, it's 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 innate in everyone. You just need to kind of just really open your eyes to it. And just like, again, I always say to people, I'm like, look, it's like climbing a mountain. Like, don't look at the peak, man. Just look at what's in front of you and just put yeah. one step in front of the other. You know, it's iterative. And that moment that you think you're going to get, you, you want to give up, like you probably are right close to the peak and most people give up, just keep going. Yeah. Like you'll get there. Like most people give up. So just keep going. And yeah, true. like, it's like a, it's like a, like it's a hold your breath contest. For like sure. Just Gla hold your breath. Half full as well. You know, That's it. that one step in front of the other. I totally agree. And speaking of success stories, I mean, your podcast, Costa Rica real estate and living podcast, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's exciting to see how quickly you've grown this business and managing projects here in Costa Rica. For those people uh, very interested right now, it's not just about what we discussed, traveling to Costa Rica and living. Of course, investing in Costa Rica, especially for many uh, retirees, people who have got some funds in the bank that want to come down and invest in a beautiful tropical location. For those wanting to invest right now, what's the state of the market when we think about real estate and investing here? Well, look, I mean, it's still pretty buoyant. I mean, things are, uh, things, uh, things are contracting a little bit. Like we're usually about 12 to 18 months behind the US. So things are slowing down in the US a little bit, but... I think what's different here is the U.S. Is, is is run, I would say, predominantly by mortgage rates and rent, you know, and rentals, but more long term rentals than short term rentals a little bit. But here, the coastal areas, you know, in the areas like Arenal, Monteverde, it's hospitality that drives everything here. So that drives real estate uh, and real estate prices. So, you know, while arrivals like 2023 is going to be the biggest year we've had on arrivals and 2024 is looking exactly the same. I spoke to people that are, you know, property management companies, hotel owners here. They're like, my January, February, March, April next year looks insane, like wow. more than ever, you know, slam. So I think 2024 will be bigger. But like at the moment is if I'm in North America or I'm in Europe, where do I go on vacation? I'm probably not going to Asia. It's a little, you know, I mean, some people are, but like, I think the general populace is like, well, the thing with China and uh, it's just not great. Europe, they're going to associate Ukraine with it, even though it's not there. And they'll be like, well, you know, about. maybe, yeah. yeah, you know, and it's like, so where do you go? You come to Latin America and what's the safest country in Latin America? It's Costa Rica. Like yeah. nothing happens here. That, I mean, totally agree. I think this is why it's been a very successful model for well over two decades, going on 30 years. Obviously, the eco-sustainable uh, appearance, the green vision of Costa Rica, it's marketed itself incredibly well. And I think lots of hotels, uh, even resorts, the rental options, they promote that same kind of style when you come down. When you talk to your clients and some of the builds, right, let's talk about your clients firstly. I'm, I'm interested to know what kind of breakdown do people want to actually invest in a property where they're coming to live or they're just looking to make money, invest in rent and then maybe come down a couple of times a year? Are you seeing trends either way? 
I'm seeing a lot. No, I'm, I mean, it's, it's probably 50 50 at the moment because I think a lot of people are just tired of political systems. And, you know, I mean, someone said to me today, I mean, look at the idiot that they just, you know, put in, you know, in, in the house today. And I'm, I'm like, I, you know, I just, yeah. I, am, don't, I don't care. It doesn't have any Im- impact directly on me politics. I don't even watch politics here. I'm just kind of like, you know, as long as I wake up in the morning and I have a coffee, all is good. Like, just yeah. don't stop me drinking coffee. I'm, I'm yeah. fine. Good cost of Um But yeah, I mean, look, we see a lot of people relocating. Uh, there's been a big influx of Canadians just because I think of, again, what's happening up there. Uh, the US as well. I mean, we've got an election next year, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see. I think a lot of people will probably bail depending on which way it goes. Yeah. Um, you know, in Costa Rica, is you can always tell how long someone's been here because if they start talking politics, you're like, okay, they've been here less than six months. And then after that, no one talks <laughs> about it because like it doesn't impact and nobody cares. Yeah. And if you talk politics here, people just walk away. Like they don't care. Yeah, it's so true. And you don't feel like it has a bigger impact like it does on the major media news streams, the outlets when you're on television. Yeah. It's a momentary thing. I mean, everybody gets TV back here, that. dude, is, it's not that much on TV. Like there's not a channel where it's just you know, talking about politics constantly, just because, yeah. again, you know, it's just not that interesting. Like, again, we have 25 presidential, can- yeah. 25 presidential candidates from 25 parties. No one has a majority. Nothing ever gets done. But that's the beauty yeah. of the country. Like, it never changes. Yeah. So, I mean, going back to your point on investments, you know, 50%, you know, with where real estate markets are going in, the, in, in North America and just the uncertainty of where interest rates are going, you know, Costa Rica has strong rental returns. And it's a lifestyle investment, meaning you get to see it. I think if someone's looking for like, hey, dude, I just want to put money in to make returns, like I can find stuff for them. They're not yeah. going to find it because they don't know the market. Like right. they're going to they're gonna luck out maybe and win the lottery on this. But there aren't that many. When you start looking at the numbers, they'll be like, oh, I'm making four or five percent. Whereas, you know, on some of the stuff that we work on, you know, we've got between 10 to 15, sometimes up to 20 percent, depending on what it is. Yeah. The more that the individual, I would say, manages it or oversees it you know, the more returns that they can make. But like, you know, we'll find bits of land that has a house on that we're able to subdivide part of the land off. So I'll just give you an example. We had a client who bought a a beautiful property with a house on it. We were able to subdivide part of that land off because it touched public road. That piece of land is worth more than what he paid for the whole thing. And so we've gone in and remodeled this older house uh, from a colonial looking house because that's what stuff here in the 90s and like up to probably about 2016, 17 was like. And just squared everything off and new windows, new doors, new kitchens, new bathrooms. And like now he's building a house on the side. So he's going to like, he's like, Rich, number one, I'd have never found this without you guys. Number two, like no realtor is going to do that analysis that you guys did for me and see this. Yes. And number three is that like, I would have been completely lost. I don't know how to subdivide land. I didn't know I needed an active order letter. I didn't need, know I needed this amount of road frontage, you know, uh, et cetera. Yeah. So, I mean, look, uh, you know, people are like, well, Rich, what do you do? And it's like, well, if you have an idea of what to do in Costa Rica, we can probably do it all for you. Uh-huh. You know, you know, and they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, say you want to do a hotel. Like we can do all the analysis for you of like what, where to do it, what to do, what not to do. Like, this is what's happening in the market. This is what your financial model looks like. This is what it's going to cost to build. These are the architects that I would do. We'll project manage it for you. We'll get it built. We'll go out to construction bidding for you. We'll do value engineering on it. We'll check it through the whole construction thing. We'll help you even put all the operational team together. You know, uh-huh. we'll put the, you know, the property management systems together, connect you with agencies, like find the right people for you from everything from idea to finish. And that's the same for relocating. You know, that's the same for investing, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, people are like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't want to hand you off to third parties that like sometimes don't know what they're doing. This is why it's such an interesting way of you managing the system. You've you've pretty much answered a lot of my next question, which was, what are some of the biggest challenges you face when project managing that people don't know? So, for example, they come down. What's the biggest challenge you'd be like, hey, this is the first thing you're going to come up against in Costa Rica. This is what we solve not not everything being so clear right okay like everything is black and white i'll give you an example we we have a client uh last week who has made an offer on a house and in front of his house is a privately owned forest in front of him say which is actually a picnic area in a closed community okay and the current owner trimmed the top of the tree so he had a view and the view is great but the current owner is like look i need some form of uh, document here that i can trim those trees and i'm like dude you ain't getting that document. Like, that's not how it works. Like, we can request that document, but really what's going to end up happening is six o'clock in the morning, you send your gardener up there, you know, with a machete or a saw, and he just takes the top of the trees off and you don't say anything. No one will ever know. You just don't say anything. Like, this is the country of ask for forgiveness, not for permission. 
So like, otherwise you're going to have to go speak to the administrator who's going to submit submit to the committee. They're going to want to analyze it. And like Costa Ricans love to talk and like, like, you know, debate stuff and respect my authority. And like, I'm on a committee (laughs) and like, just, just cut the top of the trees off, dude. Like you're not cutting trees down, just trim the top of the trees just to maintain your view. But like some people can't manage that sometimes or like, Hey, Rich, um, do I have all the documents to, you know, um, like, or the plans for the house are not exactly the same as what he built. And I'm like, well, that kind of is kind of normal because a construction permit is for a size per square meter and you have a 10% overage or less than that. Like you don't need permissions to do that. And it's like, well, yeah, he put an extra room on this. And I was like, that's fine. Like it was signed off by an engineer during, like we don't have municipal inspectors. It's individual engineers who are are responsible for the project. Like that, I think it's that uncertainty that people aren't used to dealing with. Like, dude, just surf the wave, man. Like, we'll take care of you. Just surf the wave. And I'm guessing because a lot of these people, they're coming down as well from developed nations where there's a certain very rigid structure of how to do Correct. something. And you expect to apply something so sincerely to a project down here. And obviously, yeah, well, like, here. yeah, like, what happens if he sues me? I'm like, no one's going to sue you, dude. It takes like 10 years and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars to sue someone here. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, and no offense, people are just chill. People just want to have fun and like be with their families. And like, it's just a different, it's how the world used to be. I I, I was speaking to uh, Madeline in the last episode of of the podcast last week. And uh, I mentioned a very similar story. It's certainly not like chopping trees down, but it's, my sister sent me a package. I'm not saying we're chopping trees. We're just trimming the top of trees. Yeah, chopping speak. trees down like Costa Ricans aren't serious about anything and you won't go to prison for like stealing a car or something like yes. that or whatever you chop down a tree you get to prison yeah this is a very yeah very good point just the very top but uh, yeah just trim it's a trim <laughs> it's a haircut it, it, it's the same thing all the way down whether it's something at the top end or something at the bottom end I told a story basically my sister sent me a package it got held up in customs I had to fill in a million forms there. and yeah. go to the health ministry to import tea bags Basically, yep. they leave me in a room alone. I just put the tea bags in my pocket and walk out. Everybody's happy. It's that it's that very relaxed mentality. And yeah, I guess people need guidance. And this is what you seem to provide incredibly well to give them the comfortable, uh, a comfortable feeling of okay, I can do. It's not going to cause. We me provide to... certainty to the uncertainty. Very good. You should use that as a tagline. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think that's the first time I've ever said that actually. There you you go. Know. But that's what we do. We we be like, don't worry. There is a way to get this done. You now know the guy and he will get it done for you. Even though it's, 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 it's so true. I, like, I have a I had, I've, I've, I've got clients bringing in furniture from the States and they're like, well, Rich, what about, I might like, don't worry about it. And they're like, well, what, I might like, don't worry about it. Like it will just turn up on your front door and you'll get a bill and I'll tell you how much that bill will be. And it will not be more than this. Are yeah. you okay with that? Yes. I might like, don't ask any more questions. That's the challenge. And again, I think that helps to have that. You've got nearly 20 years. I mean, how, how long have you been in the country now? I think it's actually full time, nearly nineteen years. So you're approaching twenty years, two decades. I think that yep. helps as well, having lived here for that long. So of course, a lot of people coming down don't have that expertise. That's a lot of expertise. You know how it works well. So they, of course, that they have to put that trust in you. So obviously, that that's then on your end, right, to help them have yeah. that. But like, look, they spend a day with us and they're like, oh, my God, like, yeah. uh, you know, half the time my clients, you know, that we end up with are like, Rich, what are you dealing with me for? Because, you know, we manage investment funds here. You yeah. know, we're building hotels and villas. And like we have some clients who are like, Rich, what are you doing taking me around looking at homes or at land? And I'm like, because this is the re- one of the I, I don't like to be in an office. Like I'm constantly traveling. Like this yeah. week was only two days, but next week I'm traveling four days out of five. The following week I'm traveling three days. Like I like to be out there and seeing stuff. It's know? also nice for you to. This is, you know, working in the travel industry, it's nice to be remembered and see it for the first time through somebody else's eyes, as well as being outdoors and living in the country that we love, right? It's invigorating to see that again. I mean, we pull the curtains behind it so that people can really see what life is like here. Not the the realtor, touristy thing. No, 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 no. no, no. This is what life is really like. And these are the questions you need to be asking. Yeah. I I have a question that'd be super interesting, I imagine, for a lot of people. A lot of people might go, I had an amazing vacation in Costa Rica. I want to invest here. I want to move down here. I have no idea where to start. What's the very basic initial process that you would recommend? Um, listen to our podcast, go on YouTube. Like, I, I mean, look, everything's, I mean, there's a lot of information. I mean, we've got over 170 podcasts on there from yeah. everything from politicians to realtors to everyone. So look, I think it's with everything. Your Whatever you're trying to do will only be as good as the team that you've got on it. You know, and I think a lot of people... I'm like, no, I'm a big investor up in the States. I'll come down in there and invest. And I'm going like, look, 
you're playing chess, we're playing checkers. The board looks the same, the pieces are the same color, but they move in different directions and it's a different game. Like the rules don't apply the same. There might be some things that do, but other things that don't, like you don't have the perspective. So like, it would be like me going to invest in the US. I'd be like, God, it's like throwing a, you know, a dart in a, in, yeah. in a dart board. Yeah. So I think it's, it doesn't matter what you do. It's only going to be as good as the people on it. And, you know, you just need to be careful in Costa Rica because there is no recourse. It's caveat emptor, buyer of aware. Like, so just be careful of the people that you're working with. Like, I've seen stuff where the construction guy was such a nice guy. Like, I met him and I met his family and then I gave him 50% and then he never did anything or just did my, my foundations. It was like, well, number one, would you do that in the US or wherever you're from? No, I yeah. wouldn't. Then why the hell would you do it here? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, it's like people cool. drink a cocktail, they get off the plane and like, it's like, oh, like no one's out here to... Like, and probably intentionally, they didn't intend to do it. It's just they're not used to dealing with that amount of money. And like, yeah. when we run projects, we make our construction companies open a separate bank account. Why? Because then all money goes in and goes out is just for that one project. It's not being taken from one and used on the other. But also is, if I want to see an audit of all expenses and everything on it, part of our contract one says, account. I want statement. Give me the statement. Yeah. I want to see money going in and money going out just in case I need to. Yeah. Very, very good tip. But, but um, I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Having well, built, right. you know, well, we built Vib when I wanted to do, we got yes. enhanced. Incredible. And what a, what a process and what a, uh, yeah. I mean, from the very start to the decade that managing it, going from hotel to rental, maybe back to hotel again. I, yeah. We did, a, we did not make money on that property. Then what? Well, this is the, loan curve, right. And this is, yeah. I mean, work from, from the ground. It cost Costa Rica. $1.8 million to build it. Yeah. You know, at the peak in 08, yeah. like at the peak, like we, our timing couldn't have been more perfectly worse. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I remember 2008 starting out my career initially in, in tourism. You see all this gray hair? You see all this gray hair? Yeah. That, that's yeah. what happens. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be this gray. But you're still smiling with the good crow's feet. So, you know, you find it. Ah, man. I mean, come on, man. I'm constantly smiling, you know? I mean, what's the other choice? I mean, it's like, it's a, this is the country of just be happy. For sure. For sure. Hey, before I leave you, I've got another couple of questions. I wanted to get your sure. opinion. If you were investing... And you were considering maybe either living outside of the Central Valley, obviously you're based and have been for many years in San Joaquin. Uh, where would you invest in the country outside the Central Valley? Look, I think it depends on what the goal is. But like, look, if it's investment, you know, we we look at a bunch of data. I have a financial analyst in my office. All he does is look at data. So I'm just constantly looking at data for areas of like, show me where the listings for uh, properties are going up, like whether listings are flat, but occupancy and average daily rates are going up. So I'm looking at that stuff. Show me the opposite of where should we not be looking, you know, but also then putting that in perspective of like, I know the majority of hoteliers in Costa Rica and like I'm constantly traveling. So I'm seeing stuff developing, what's moving, where prices are, because, you know, I'm probably seeing a hundred bits of real estate a week, at least, you know, all over the country. So it just gives perspective in certain areas, you know, of what's happening. But look, I think it's about finding your tribe. Like I could name areas like, look, I love Uvita Ojo Chao in the Southern area. It's got great restaurants, good schools, yeah. good infrastructure. You know, you know, Sada is great, but it's really expensive. I also love Playa Grande, Hacien, just south of Hacienda Panilla, Avianas, Negra. That's a little bit more raw and authentic. I think if someone's looking to move to Costa Rica for the first time, you know, probably don't go too far off the beaten track. Move to yeah. somewhere that's like a little more, you know, that has all of its creature comforts. Then maybe a year later, once you've got used to it and you've acclimatized, then, you know, if you're like, you know what, I kind of want to be a little further out in the boonies a little bit more where it's like a little bit more authentic and, yeah. you know, I'm out there and chickens running around and like, you know, that. But I would say just take it slowly. Sometimes I say to clients, I might don't buy anything. Like the decision sometimes is not to do anything. Like just rent for the first, you know, yeah. couple of months. Yeah, Costa Rica sure. is easy to get in. It's not so easy to exit if you don't invest or buy the right thing. Yeah. And that's always surprising, right? When your clients come around and go, wow, you're telling me not to? And I go, yeah, perhaps you're not the initial candidate for this area. Get used to the culture a little bit, spend a bit more time here, right? Yeah, yeah we're pretty good though at matchmaking. You know, like you guys at Costa Rica Vacations are great at matchmaking with hotels. We're pretty good at matchmaking with locations based yeah. on, you know, so we ask, you know, we interview clients and I'm usually within two seconds. I'm like, okay, guys, these are your areas that I think are going to work for you, you know? Yeah. And then they get down and they were like, wow, I wasn't thinking about that area. I'm like, just go. And then they get down there and go, this was exactly what I was looking for. And I was like, hold you. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, Richard, it's been a marvelous pleasure speaking to you. I've, uh, I've got a lot to thank you for down the years and getting me initially uh, uh, started my own uh, visit, my own career here in tourism. So thank you for that. Great to chat with you. Hopefully have you back on the on the show very soon. Um, we're going to plug your, uh, your, your podcast, of course. 
and I'll put all your description information uh, below so people can reach out to you directly just for questions, whether they want to invest, come down, spend a little bit more time in the country, um, perhaps get to know your model and what you do. Uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it helps out. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Well, I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Some fantastic uh, top tips and information from Richard, especially when it comes to investing uh, here in Costa Rica and some of the things you should avoid, some of the things you should prepare for, um, as well as just generally talking about the culture of Costa Rica and the importance of getting settled beforehand before making any big investment decisions. Uh, as mentioned, you can find all of Richard's contact information in the description box below. Uh, so do reach out to him if you are thinking about moving down to this part of the world, or certainly if you're investing um, or even want to build your own home or possible rental property for the future. He is the guy to go for. Highly recommended. Thanks very much, Richard. And hopefully we'll have you back very soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. Again, if you have any questions for us, please let me know and uh, we'll get straight back to you. And please don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed this uh, video. And of course, subscribe to never miss out on a weekly episode. I've been your host, Adam Baker. So until next time, hasta la próxima.